Christmas trees, pine cones. I want to talk to you about some Christmassy mathematics. And what's interesting about the pine cone are these spirals that you see. And if you count how many, I've done it for this one, you get eight spirals in one direction and 13 in the other. Now, those are called Fibonacci numbers. They're very famous in mathematics. They go back to 1202 when Leonardo of Pisa, who was later given the nickname Fibonacci, wrote a textbook of arithmetic. And these numbers came up in a rather silly problem about rabbits. But people quickly discovered that they seem to occur very commonly in the plant kingdom. If you count the number of petals on flowers, you look at the spacings of branches on trees, you look at pineapples, and you look at pine cones, you keep seeing these Fibonacci numbers. And over about 200 years, mathematicians and biologists between them put together a pretty good description of the geometry of these numbers. But they still hadn't completely explained where they come from. This year is the centenary of Alan Turing, a very well-known mathematician, famous for his work during the war on codes and for being a pioneer of computer science. But he was also a pioneer of mathematical biology. And Turing was interested in these Fibonacci numbers and patterns on plants. He didn't publish on that, but in his unpublished papers, there's a very extensive piece of unfinished work about it. But he did publish on a related problem, which is markings on animals, stripes on tigers, spots on leopards, that kind of thing. He was especially interested in cows. <laughs> Frisian cows have a black and white patchy, dappled pattern. And Turing came up with a, a mathematical theory of these patterns. Based on the idea there must be some kinds of chemical, which he called a morphogen, a shape generator. It means you don't know what it is. Um, but these morphogens are chemicals that are somehow produced in an embryo animal. And they react together to create other chemicals. And all of these chemicals diffuse, spread sideways across the surface. And if you do the mathematics of this, you find a very common pattern in this kind of reaction diffusion system or Turing system are waves. Think of waves coming up the beach. You have a whole series of parallel straight waves coming up the beach. And if you took a snapshot of that as an instant of time, it looks like stripes. Yes, the top of the waves look like the dark stripes on a tiger and the troughs of the waves could be the, the orange patches and white in between. And these Turing equations have these wave patterns. And if instead of one set of waves you have two set of waves which cross each other, then you get spots. So the big difference between tigers and leopards is that a tiger has one set of waves, a leopard has two. Now, Jim Murray, who is a mathematical biologist, was looking at patterns on big cats. And he realized that something quite interesting follows from this description of chemical waves, which is that a striped animal cannot have a spotted tail. But a spotted animal can have a striped tail. So the tiger has striped body, striped tail. The leopard has a spotty body and a spotty tail. And the cheetah has a spotty body and a striped tail. But you don't find a big cat, or indeed very much any other kind of animal, where you have a striped body and a spotted tail. And the reason is, if you have room for two sets of waves to form spots on the tail, there's even more room on the body for two sets of waves. So you will tend to get spots on the body as well. All of this has been followed up for lots of different types of creatures, for butterflies, for fish, for seashells. But there's a big problem from the point of view of modern biology. The theory talks about chemicals, but it doesn't say what chemicals they are. It doesn't tell us which chemicals are involved. It just says they're morphogens. But recently, biologists have started to discover what the chemicals are. And in fact, this year, uh, some dental researchers at King's College 
discovered that if you look at the roof of the mouth of a mouse, there's a little pattern of ridges. And those ridges are caused by a Turing process, and they know the morphogens, they know the chemicals. They're quite famous in biology. One is called FGF, and the other is called sonic hedgehog. FGF is a hormone that promotes the growth of skin cells, and sonic hedgehog is a protein associated with a gene, which is also called sonic hedgehog, um, because in fruit flies, it makes the fruit fly look spiky. Anyway, we now know the morphogens in the mouse's mouth. We also know an important morphogen in plants. We've known that for a bit longer. It's called auxin. It's a hormone. It promotes the growth of plant cells. And Alan Newell, who used to be the chair of the mathematics department at Warwick University, and his colleagues in Arizona, got very interested in a rather common plant that you find in Arizona, namely cactus. And they were studying the patterns in cacti, and they realized that there's another important ingredient that had not been put into the mathematics, which is basically the shape. The shape of the surface of the plant, the way the plant cells push against each other. And this is like a very classical area of mathematics called elasticity theory. And by using elasticity theory coupled to Turing's equations, using what's known about this hormone auxin, they were able to find a very good explanation of the shapes and numbers occurring in cacti. And what they found was when you see these Fibonacci number patterns, it's because there are three sets of chemical waves. So tiger stripes, one set, Leopard spots, two sets. Fibonacci numbers, three sets. But the rather clever feature of the mathematics, when you have three sets of waves, the numbers of waves in one set is the other two numbers added together. And that's the rule for forming Fibonacci numbers. You get 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. Each number is the previous two added together. So now there's a much more complete picture of how these numbers occur. It's a unified picture where the biochemistry, the numbers that occur, the chemical waves, Turing's reaction diffusion equations, and the shape, the elasticity of the creature or the plant all come together in one package. And that package is giving us a much better understanding of all of these patterns in the animal and plant kingdoms from Christmas trees to cheetah's tails.